Replacement on demand. Just got your new motor from the junkyard, getting ready to drop into your project. You yank the intake off and you find this valley cover, right? Displacement on demand, you wanna get rid of it. You're gonna put a cam in this thing, you're gonna cram a bunch of boost down its throat, whatever the case may be, you do not want this. So today we're gonna to discuss what components need to be replaced, what to look out for when you're purchasing a DOD delete kit, and just highlight more or less the general procedure. Um, by no means is this a step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, as you can see, I've got the long block broken down here just to kind of make things easier to explain. Um, obviously, you need some general mechanical ability to get to this point, but Again, this is just kind of like a highlight, some of the parts to look for, uh, what I use, what's worked well for me. So starting at the top, you've got the uh, valve lifter oil manifold, right? So if you pull off the intake and you've got a valley cover that's not smooth and it's got all these ridges and raised spots, then your motor's got DOD. And this is where you need to start. So when you pull this off, you're gonna see it's got four solenoids. Um, and these solenoids are responsible for actuating the four cylinders that displacement on demand can cut. Um, so this system needs to get eliminated. This gets replaced with just a traditional smooth GM valley cover. You can get these from GM, you can get them from your local parts store in a lot of cases. Um, I prefer to buy them from Brian Tooley. I found that Brian Tooley's got the best prices on covers and gaskets and things like that. So that's who I go through. Um, this particular cover is a 6.2 truck cover. So one thing you'll notice is that it's completely flat and there's no PCV provision. Now, this is something you're going to want to be conscious of when you're buying parts for your DOD swap. If you have a daily driver, um, you're running a closed PCV system, you're gonna want a vented valley cover. That one will not work for you. In this case, this is a turbo application. We're gonna be venting the valve covers to a catch can. They're just gonna go to atmosphere. So I didn't need that additional vent on the valley, which is why I opted for this cover. This is a production 6.2 truck cover. Um, so again, just something to be conscious of when you're looking at these parts. Um, that cover from Brian Tooley comes with all new bolts new gasket, new O-rings, um, and it's dirt cheap. I want to say this particular cover is like 65 bucks, um, somewhere right around there. So cheap money, really good option. I find the vented ones are more money, so that's one reason why I stick away from them. Um, so that covers the oil manifold, right? That covers your solenoids. That needs to be replaced. That's got to go. Moving on to the lifters, once you get the cylinder heads off, you're gonna find that DOD lifters have this giant contraption on the top of them. These things fail all the time. I can't tell you how many cars I've had come through the shop, cars and trucks that have had collapsed lifters um, or bad oil manifolds, and we've had to replace them. Um, so that's in a stock application, never mind a performance application. So, I mean, it's all the more reason, I consider this a maintenance item, you know, as much as, yes, we're adding a cam, we're increasing performance, all that great stuff, to me, if I bought a car and it had DOD, that would be the first thing to go. So, you will need to buy lifters. When you pull one of the factory trays, you're going to see two different style lifters. You've got the DOD lifters and you've got the standard lifters. Um, and then you've got the, the DOD trays. Now, one thing to keep in mind is... A lot of the entry-level DOD delete kits online only include eight lifters. They only include the lifters to replace um, the DOD ones. They expect you to reuse the other eight. It's your call. Um, I do not recommend it. This is the way I look at it. You've got this motor all broken down. Um, you've got the cylinder heads off. You've gone this far why would you take a chance, especially if it's a junkyard motor, running, you know, eight lifters that have unknown mileage? If you got a motor that did not have displacement on demand, fine, I get it. You're not yanking the heads, you're leaving those torque to yield bolts, you're not touching the gaskets, whatever lifters are in there are in there, great. But you're here, you're already here, the heads are off. It's not 
you know a ton of money you can get a set of ls7 lifters for 130 bucks um why take a chance so you know be conscious of that if you're looking at if you're looking online and some of these dod delete kits catch your attention um with a cheap price tag really pay attention to what they're coming with um you know what's included with the kit so we've covered the lifters you want to replace them uh you will need to replace the trays as well every dod delete kit i've seen has these included um but again, you know, if you're on some weird website and they've got a kit for $100, which they're just selling you a valley cover and they tell you that's a delete, they're lying. So, you know, be conscious, buy from a reputable supplier, make sure that you're getting all the components you need. So we've covered the valley cover. We've got the lifter trays. You know how I feel about lifters. I recommend you replace all 16, but I get it. This is a hobby. It's a budget. Um, none of us need this stuff. We do it for fun. Um, so, you know, if it's not in your budget and you, you know, you're on a shoestring and you really can only replace eight of them, all the more power to you. I get it. Um, so we've covered those components. Aftermarket cam. One thing I want to highlight is the cam gear. If you have a newer LS, uh, four post, 07 and up, or VVT motor, your cam gear is going to be different than 06 and down. Um, 06 and down are typically one post because it's a 24 tooth reluctor motor, uh, you know, so early LS2s, early LS4s, um, they have the correct three bolt cam gear out of the box. If this was an 07 or newer LS4, it's going to have this one bolt cam gear, which is not compatible with most aftermarket cams. Um, this is a custom grind from engine power systems and, you know, as you can see, three bolt cam gear goes on there, no problem. You got three places to put your bolts in, but you're not getting this on there. So, you know, if you have an 07 or newer motor, do yourself a favor and go ahead and order a cam gear ahead of time because you're gonna need one. Um, if you have variable valve timing, that's a whole different story. In addition to replacing the cam gear, you're also gonna need to change the front cover to this style, which is, you know, LS2, LS4, LS3, um, with the cam sensor in the front. Now, getting back to what I was kinda touching on earlier, um, doing things once, you know, a lot of times you can get away with reusing the these gaskets. You know, GM did a really good job with these. Um, you know, most of them are aluminum body with a nice thick rubber O-ring. Um, I've had pretty good luck reusing them, but uh, again, consider your application, consider how difficult some jobs might be if you get this back together um, and you develop an oil leak, and consider that when you're planning that out, because most of the displacement on demand kits, they're not gonna come with a front cover gasket. They're not gonna come with a crank seal. And I mean, obviously, this crank seal was leaking. I mean, it's it's clear as day. Um, you know, it, it should be replaced and I, I am going to replace it. But, you know, it, it's just something to consider. Um, again, I'm all for budget. I'm all for doing things as cheap as you can. I get it. Just be conscious of how difficult it's gonna be if you slam this motor back in your car and, you know, you get it all together, you get it running and your crank seal's dumping or your front cover's dumping or your oil pan gasket's dumping. You know, those are all nightmare jobs to do in the car for some chassis, especially in a front wheel drive. So, you know, just consider that. Um, you know, it's six to one, half dozen to another. If you're inspecting it and you're real confident with what you see, um, then by all means, take your chances and run it. It's your time. Um, but again, it's just one more thing to consider. So, you know, kind of wrapping this up, that, that's your primary components you need to replace. Got to do your lifters, got to do your trays. Obviously, you're replacing your camshaft. Got to delete those solenoids, get a nice cover on there. Um, you have the heads off. So again, head gaskets, you know, I, I've seen guys online use them, you know, reuse them. They've had really good luck, but I, I'm not going to take a chance for $35, $40 a gasket. I mean, you're going to put this back in there for 35, 40 bucks, or are you just going to buy a brand new set and not have to worry about yanking a head back off because, um, you know, 
you're <laughs> for whatever reason it's not sealed you're blowing coolant whatever the case may be um you know but uh, enough preaching on gaskets that's not what the video is about you get the idea you know where i stand it's just a suggestion um last thing i do want to touch on is head fasteners um you essentially have three options stock bolts whether you choose to reuse them which some guys do even though they're torqued to yield um or a brand new set of stock ones this is arp's setup um these are just bolts they're not even studs um or arp studs um I'm not even gonna discuss China studs in this video because you're wasting your money in my opinion. Um, but again, that's your call. You know, we're we're all adults and we can invest in what we want. Um, but just to show you what the ARP hardware kit looks like, I'm sure you all know what bolts look like, but you know, this is the 2004 newer all equal length head bolt kit so i mean that's one other thing to keep in mind if you're piecing together a kit by yourself um depending on how they're listed you know most manufacturers do a good job make sure your head bolt kit is for 2004 and newer and that they're all equal length um this is a great kit um you know guys have had really good luck with stock bolts again if you have to remove the heads and you have the bolts out it's cheap insurance if you're going to be cramming a lot of boost down its throat if it's a daily driver, naturally aspirated build, yeah, sure, you know, put stock bolts in, you'll be fine. Um, even mild boosted applications for guys that are on a budget. Um, but I find that this ARP kit in particular is a happy medium. Um, you know, studs can get really expensive and, you know, stock head bolts are cheap and this kind of falls right in the middle. Um, my biggest issue with the factory torque to yield bolts in a turbo application is that they're designed to stretch their torque to yield. You know, you have to use torque angle to um, properly fasten them. Um, these are not designed to stretch. <laughs> these are a fixed torque rate. Um, you know, I, I just have a hard time bringing myself to run stock bolts on high horsepower applications. So good option. Again, part number will be in the end of the video. Um, I'm gonna run down everything I use gasket part numbers so you have them all in one place it's easy to find so if you're on brian tooley's website you're calling up your local dealership whatever the case may be uh you have everything you need to order the components um for your dod delete so in a nutshell that's it i hope you guys find this video useful if you have any questions drop them in the comments i'll do what i can to answer them as quickly as possible so thanks for watching